This is Tamara from Mooglyblog.com, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to crochet the Every Little Thing Square, a free 12-inch crochet block pattern that you'll find on Mooglyblog.com. Please go to the link in the description. There you'll find both right and left-handed video tutorials, as well as a link to the written pattern and all of the supplies you need. This pattern was originally designed for the wedding blanket crochet along using Chic Sheep Yarn by Marley Bird and a USI 5.5 millimeter hook. This one is by Furls. So these squares turned out to be 12 inches. Now in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating this square pattern using Red Heart with Love and a US J hook because that's what I'm using for the Moogly Crochet Along. And when I'm finished, I'll also be adjusting this slightly so that it fits the Moogly Crochet Along dimensions of 12 inches but since it is a different yarn and hook, it's turning out a little bigger. So again, go to the link in the description if you'd like to see how to adjust this square for a little bit different yarn. First, let's take a look at the finished square as it was originally done with Red Heart Chic Sheep. And here is the finished wedding blanket crochet along. Now, let's go ahead and demo this beautiful square using Red Heart with Love. All right. Round one of the Every Little Thing Square begins with a magic circle. If you need a tutorial for this, I do have a separate tutorial for it on my channel. However, the way I do it is I wind the yarn around my finger twice towards me. Then I insert my hook. Oh, and I'm going to pull that down a little further so I've got a nice tail to weave in there. And I insert my hook underneath both those loops. Pull the back one forward a little bit. I like to do just basically a little chain here, but pull it down tight so I don't really use it as a chain. It just secures my magic loop together. And from there, I can begin crocheting. This pattern begins each round. Well, I shouldn't say each round, but many of the rounds with a chain two that does not count as a stitch. If you prefer, you can use the chainless starting double crochet instead of the chain two and first double crochet of the round. And I do, again, have a tutorial linked for that in the link in the description. However, for this video, I'm just going to make it the standard way. So we've got a chain two, and then we're just going to make 12 double crochets right into that ring. So that means we just go under both of those loops that are around my finger and make 12 double crochets. So there's one. I'm going to go ahead and make one more. I just go under both those loops on my finger. It's really important that you, important rather, that you go under both the one that's going all the way around and the one that's actually just kind of the tail here because that will allow you to close up your magic circle when you are done putting your stitches into it. So that is two double crochets. And with that, it is pretty secure. I can pull my finger out and just go right in there with my hook. So I'm going to continue making double crochets until I have 12 double crochets made, and I will see you then at the end of round one. All right, so I've made 12 double crochets all into that ring, worked over both of those strands. So at this point, I can take that tail end and go ahead and give it a tug, like so, and you can see it closes the center right up. Now, when I go to weave in that tail, the main complaint about magic circles is that they don't stay closed. The key really is to use your yarn needle to weave it in both directions. So go ahead and go one direction and then come back and weave it in the other. And if you can split that yarn while you're coming back in the other direction, that really helps lock it in. So let's go ahead and finish up round one with a slip stitch. We're going to join to that first double crochet we made. Just go ahead and join with a slip stitch under both of those front loops, or excuse me, both of those loops, not just the front one. All right, so that's the end of round one. Round two begins again with a chain two that does not count as a stitch. And then we are going to double crochet and chain two in each stitch around. So we yarn over, go right back into that very first stitch for a double crochet, and then chain two, one and two. Then we're going to do that again in the next stitch. Double crochet in the next stitch, and chain two, one and two. So the next stitch, double crochet, and chain two. So at the end of this round, we'll again have 12 stitches, that's 12 double crochets, but there will be tw uh, two chains in between each of those. So go ahead and make those, and I will see you at the end of round two. All right, so here we are at the end of round two. I've got 12 double crochets with chain twos, or two chains in between each of them, or chain twos, I guess you could say. I've got a chain two here at the end, so I am ready to join to the top of that very first double crochet we made, like so. There we have it, and then we're ready for round three. Round th three is pretty simple here. We're just gonna chain one, 
and then we're going to skip the first double crochet, so that one we just joined to, and work three single crochets in the next chain two space. So you don't have to try and work into those chains, you just go right into that space, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through for a single crochet. So that's one, and two, and three like so, all in that chain two space. Then we're going to skip the next double crochet and work three single crochets in the next chain two space. And that's our basic repeat around. We just skip right over those double crochets, don't worry about them, and just work three single crochets right in each one of these chain spaces all the way around. So when you get to the end of round three, you should have a total of 36 single crochets, three of them each in those 12 chain two spaces. So I will see you when we get to the end of round three. All right, and here I am at the end of round three. I've got 36 total single crochets made, so I'm just going to slip stitch right to that very first single crochet we made to finish off the round. Now for round four, we're going to make making popcorn stitches, which are some of my favorite stitches. Now there are lots of different ways to, um, or I should say lots of different numbers that you can use making popcorn stitches. Uh, for instance, the independent popcorn stitch tutorial I have uses five double crochets, but for this one, we're going to work four double crochets. So let me show you how that's done here. We're going to start with a chain one, just as our little turning chain here, and then I'm going to work my first popcorn stitch right in this first stitch. Um, so actually not in the double crochet, it kind of looks like it is, but it'll be right in that single crochet that we joined to. So I'm going to yarn over and go right back in that stitch we joined to and make a double crochet. And I'm going to go ahead and work it all the way off my hook here. So there's one, then I'll make another one. There's two, three, and four. And they're all worked into that same single crochet right there, that very first stitch of the previous round. Now, after we've made these four double crochets, the trick to the popcorn is to lift that loop off your hook. I like to put it right on my finger there so it's nice and secure. Find the top of that first double crochet we made, the first of the four. So there's the last one. So one, two, three, four. There's the top of the first one. I'll insert my hook under both of those top two loops of that first double crochet we made. Slip this hook right, or this loop rather, right back on my hook. Pull that loop down there so it's nice and tight. Then I'm just going to pull that loop right on through the top of that first stitch like so. And with that, we've made our first popcorn. I will show that to you again here in just a moment. But first now, we're going to chain two, one, two, and then we're going to skip the next stitch. So if you need to pull that popcorn aside a little bit to see those single crochet stitches, that's fine. So skip the next one, and then we're going to uh, popcorn right in the next one. So we yarn over, go in that stitch, and make four double crochets. And we're, remember, we're going to finish each one. So there's one, two, three, and four. All worked into the same single crochet. Then we pull that loop up and off, and slip it right over your finger. Insert your hook under the first of those four double crochets made. And after that first one, it's a lot easier to find that first one. So we just go right under those top two loops, slip that loop right back on our hook and pull it down nice and tight, and then pull it right on through to finish the stitch. Then we just keep doing that repeat. Chain two, skip the next stitch, popcorn in the next. We'll do one more together. Let's make four double crochets right into that first, or that indicated stitch. So there's one, two, three, and four. All worked right there. Pull that loop up and off. Insert your hook under the top two loops of the first double crochet you made. Slip the loop back on your hook, pull it down to tighten, and pull it right on through the top of the stitch. And then don't forget to chain two, and we can just do that repeat on around. Skip one, popcorn in the next, chain two, skip one, popcorn in the next, all the way around, so that at the end of round four, you should have 18 popcorn stitches total. So I will see you when we get to the end of round four. All right, so here I am at the end of round four. I've got my 18 popcorn stitches, and I wanna make sure you don't forget to put that last chain two in between your last popcorn stitch and your first before you join. So then you can go ahead and join right to the top of your first popcorn stitch. And joining to these can be a little wonky. Um, just kind of pick the best place you think your hook looks when you stick it in there. 
Um, it's all going to get covered up here in the next round anyway. So just get that hook in there and get it joined and it's all good. Now for there, from there rather, we're ready for round five. So we're going to chain one and skip over the popcorn and work four half double crochets in the next chain two space. And that's basically what we're going to do around. We're not going to work into any of the popcorns. That's why I say just kind of get joined over there so you can start working into that chain space. We're just going to work into the chain spaces around and in each one of them, again, we're going to work four half double crochets. Let's do this first one together. I'll yarn over, go right into that chain two space right in between the popcorns, pull up my loop, yarn over and pull through all three. So there's my first one. So then I'll do three more right back in that same chain space. Two, three, and four, like so. Then I can skip right over that popcorn, find the next chain space, and make four more. So that's basically it for round five. So when we get to the end of this round, you should have 72 stitches. So I will see you when we get to the end of round five. Okay, and here we are at the end of round five. I've worked four half double crochets in each of those chain two spaces between our popcorns. You can see it really helps that texture pop. So now I'm just going to go ahead and join to that first half double crochet I made with a slip stitch here. Get under those top two loops. There we go, they wanted to hide from me there for a minute. And then we're ready for round six. Okay, so for round six, we're going to start with a chain two that does not count as a stitch. So there's our chain two and then double crochet in the first stitch. Then we'll chain one, skip the next stitch, and that's our repeat. We double crochet in the next stitch, chain one, and skip the next. Double crochet in the next stitch, chain one, and skip one. So we're just going to do that all the way around for round six. So at the end of round six, we'll have 36 double crochets and 36 chains. I will see you at the end of round six. All right, so here we are at the end of round six. I have 36 double crochets and 36 chains. And don't forget, you need that last, that 36th chain between the last double crochet you make and before you join to that first one you made. So now that that's done, we're ready for round seven. Round seven is going to take a little bit more attention. We're going to start with a chain one and work two single crochets in that first chain space. So skip right over that first stitch and work two single crochets right in that first chain space. So there's one and there's two. There we go. Then we're going to skip the next stitch and work two single crochets in the next chain space. One, two. Then we're going to skip the next stitch and work three in the next chain space. One, two, and three. So that is our repeat. So for round seven, if we just talk it through, we're going to skip over all the double crochets and only work into the chain spaces. And the re repeat, and they're all single crochets, is going to be basically two, two, three. So in the next one, we would work two, one, two. In the next one, we'd work two, one, two, and then the next one would work three. One, two, three. So again, all single crochets, skip right over the double crochets, just repeat two, two, three, two, two, three, all the way around. So then at the end of round seven, if you keep that and maintain that stitch count, you'll have 84 single crochets at the end of round seven. So I will see you at the end of round seven. All right, and I've finished round seven. I've got 84 single crochets, and you should finish up with three single crochets in that very last chain space before you go ahead and join with a slip stitch to the first single crochet you made of the round. From here, we're ready to begin round eight. And round eight will be the last round that we make with our color A. If you're making all one color, of course, you don't have to break. When I do, you can just keep going. I'm gonna go ahead and start with a chain one. And then I'm going to back loop only half double crochet in each stitch around. So we're going to work even. We'll still have 84 stitches in round eight, but we're going to back loop half double crochet all of them. So if you've worked front loop and back loop before, you're familiar with this. If you haven't, I do have a separate tutorial, but let me show you really quick right now. The front loop and the top loop refer to those two loops of the V on top of a stitch. And the front loop is always the one that's closest to you, the crocheter, while the back loop is always the one furthest away. If you flip your work, 
then this one becomes the front loop and that one becomes the back loop. Like I said, it's always relative to you. So we're going to go ahead and make half double crochets, but going into that back loop only. So to do that, since I want to start in the stitch I joined to, pull that stitch, that join here to the side a little bit, and then I'm going to put my hook right in between the loops of that V so that it goes only under the back loop. Then I can yarn over and pull up my loop, yarn over and finish my half double crochet, just like that. You can see that front loop is unworked, and what that will do is it will create a really nice visual, visual ridge all the way around our circle. So we just yarn over again, go right into the center of that next V of the next stitch, go under just that back loop, pull up our loop, and finish our half double crochet. So we're just going to do that in every stitch around, and then at the end of round eight, we'll be ready to break our yarn and finish off and go to our next color. So I will see you when we get there. Okay, so here we are at the end of round eight and our square's getting pretty big. So it's time to go ahead and break a color A. Now, normally you would join with a slip stitch and break your yarn, but I like to use something that I call the seamless join, where before I've joined with a slip stitch, I'm going to go ahead and cut my yarn, leaving a good six inches or so to weave in that end. Then I will use my hook to simply pull that loop up on through, put it on a yarn needle here. There we are. And then essentially I'm going to sew a duplicate stitch or a false V over the top of this first stitch of the round. Now the reason I'm going into the second stitch to create this and going over the top of the first one is so that I don't accidentally basically add a stitch to this round. I want to maintain my stitch count. So going into the second stitch of the round, I'll go under both of those loops with my hook, or excuse me, with my needle, pull that tail end through until it's about the size there, about the size of a top of one of the other stitches. And then I can take my needle and go right down into the center of that stitch we came out of, that last stitch, like so. Pull that on through. And then just kind of wiggle it around, tighten it up, loosen it up as needed, until visually now that sewn loops looks the same as the Vs of the other stitches. Then we can take that little sewing needle there. I like to go through the top of the stitch that I skipped over, the one underneath, just under those two loops to help tack it down. And then I can just weave in those ends when I finish up my square. So I'll just send that right under there to hold it secure and weave that end in later. And we're ready to begin round nine. To begin round nine, I'm going to pull up my color B and we're going to work each stitch of round nine in the third loop of the indicated stitch. So in the previous round, we did half double crochet stitches and we also talked about front loop and back loop but particularly on half double crochet stitches, um, as well as taller stitches, but it's easiest to find on half double crochet. When you look at the back, there is one more horizontal loop hiding out back here, all the way in back. So if we look at the top again, here's the front of our work. There's those top two loops of the V. I'm gonna pull up my needle here so it's a little easier to see. We've got our front loop, our back loop, and if we look to the back of the stitch, this right here, this horizontal loop right here is the third loop. It's in the back of the half double crochet. And that's where we're going to work all the stitches of round nine. So to begin, we are going to begin by joining to any stitch, doesn't matter which one. So if you haven't changed colors, just keep going on and work right back in that first stitch. And we're going to join with a standing double crochet. If you haven't changed colors, you can just chain two and double crochet in this third loop. But for the standing double crochet, let me find my end here. And again, I have a separate tutorial for this on my YouTube channel and linked at the link in the description. I will hold my tail end here in my hook hand in my non-hook fingers, yarn over twice, find any old stitch here, flip it over and find that third loop in the back, like so. Go under that third loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. You'll notice I'm still holding onto that tail end. I'm going to continue to do that as I work the next stitch. The next stitch is going to be a double crochet right back in that same stitch. So I'll yarn over, go right back under that same third loop and make a second double crochet. Now at this point, I'm comfortable dropping that tail end. And when I come back and work into that stitch for a slip stitch, if I can kind of try and get some nail in there so you can see it, I'll work under that loop and under that tail end. That's what I'll join to to finish off this round. So if you want to, you can put a stitch marker right in there too. So let's continue though with our pattern for now. 
We've got our standing double crochet and double crochet worked into the same stitch. Now we're going to chain two and work two more double crochets right back in that same loop. So we yarn over, go right back in that loop, make another double crochet, and one more. And that will be the corner. This is the round where we're going to start squaring up our square. So this will be our first corner. Now from there, I'm going to double crochet in the next three stitches. And remember, we are still working into that third loop the entire time for this round. So there's one, then two, then three. If you really can't get the hang of the third loop, if it's just giving you fits, you can instead work this round in the back loop only of the previous round. I just really like the look of working that third loop. It pushes that top V forward and creates a really nice look right here. But as you can see where we worked into the back loop only here, you also get a nice loop if you just were, or a nice look rather, if you just work into that back loop. So continuing on, we are going to half double crochet in the next three stitches. So there's one. two and three then we will single crochet in the next eight stitches again just keep working in that third loop right in the back of each of those stitches if you can so there's two three i'll have to count or i'll lose my count here four five six seven and eight. Then you can see here, like I said, we're squaring it up. We're making a straight line. It's time to start building taller stitches out for our next corner. The next thing we'll do is work three half double crochets. So one, two, and three. And then double crochet in the next three. One, two, and three and then finally we're ready to make our second corner so that was one repeat so we'll make our corner in the next stitch it's going to be two double crochets one two worked right in that same stitch chain two and two double crochets right back in that stitch again so let's go ahead and finish this second side together so you can see how it all comes together and then you can work the last two sides on your own. We've made our corner, so now it's time for three double crochets. One, whoops, there we go. Two, and three. Oops, that one wants to hide from me there. Ah, that's the one I joined to, so it can be hard to find that one. Just take your time and find where you wanna put that stitch. There we go, three. Then three half double crochets, one, two, oops, three, then eight single crochets, one, two, three, four, five, six, Oops, there we are. Seven and eight. Let's see, did I miss any stitches there or anything? Nope, looks good. All right, three half double crochets. One, two, three, and then three double crochets. Work our way back up in height here. One, two, and three, like so. So you can see now we've got two relatively squared up sides of our square made and we're ready for another corner. Then we can work our way down into double crochets, half double crochets, single crochets, work our back, way back up with half double crochets and double crochets and another corner all around. So keep working on round nine. At the end of round nine, you should have 96 stitches and eight chains. That's those chain twos right in the corner there, four corners of course. And I will see you at the end of round nine. Okay, so at the end of round nine, you should have four corners and four sides. But if I lay it down here, you can see there's still a little bit of curve. So in the next round, we're going to be straightening that out a little bit more. What we want to do first though, is join to that first stitch. So if you use that standing stitch, make sure you go under that first loop right there and then work over that tail as well. So I'll just go ahead and slip stitch there to finish off round nine. 
To begin round 10, we're going to start again with a chain two that does not count as a stitch. Then we're going to double crochet right in that first stitch, like so, and then double crochet in the next stitch. And that brings us right to our corner. So in each of these corners, we're going to work two double crochets, one, two, followed by a chain two, one, two, and two more double crochets right back into that chain two space, like so. Then we are going to double crochet in the next three stitches. So find that top of that first one there. There's one and two and three. Then we have double crochet in the next three stitches. Sounds familiar, right? One, two, three. And then we are going to single crochet in the next 12 stitches. So one, two, three, oops, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's see, 11 and 12. All right, now we can half double crochet another three. One, two, three. That brings us to our double crochets. One, two, and three. And it puts us right back here in our corner. So in our corner chain two space, we work two double crochets, chain two and two double crochets, just as we did before. So this should make a lot of sense to you here. We're getting our taller stitches here on the end, our shorter stitches in the middle to really straighten out that edge. You can see now we've got a really nice straight edge there between our corners. So we're just going to continue the same way around. Remember we make a corner, three double crochets, three half double crochets, 12 single crochets, three half double crochets, three double crochets, and another corner. So as we come all the way around here, Remember, before we made this corner, we already worked these two double crochets. So we'll work our 12 single crochets, three half double crochets, and then just one more double crochet before we join to that stitch. But we're going to be breaking our color B at the end of round 10. Uh, so you go ahead and work your way around, and I will see you at the end of round 10 when we're ready for round 11. Okay, so when you finish round 10, your square should be a lot square, and we're ready to bring up our third color for round 11. If you aren't changing colors, then when you end up right about here, what you'll want to do is slip stitch on over to that corner chain two space so you can begin there with the rest of us in round 11. What we're going to do now is join with a standing double crochet in any corner chain two space. So I'll yarn over twice, just as I showed you before, go right into that corner chain two space, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. And I'm going to keep holding on to that tail. I'm going to make another double crochet right in that chain two space. And then I can drop that tail, chain two, and two more double crochets right back in that corner. The same type of corner we were making before, like so. Then we are going to work an extended back post double crochet in each stitch across to the next corner. So let me demo how to make that now. Okay, so to make an extended back post double crochet, we're going to start out working it exactly as any other back post double crochet. We'll yarn over once, go around the next stitch from the back, around the post of it, come out the back side of the fabric here, yarn over, pull that loop all the way around the post to the back, like so, then we're going to yarn over and pull through just that first loop. That's the extended part. Then we yarn over and pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. And that is an extended back post double crochet. Let's do another one together. We're going to yarn over, go around the post of the next stitch from behind, around the post, yarn over, pull that loop all the way through the fabric there, all the way up to the back, yarn over, pull through just that first loop, then yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. So one more time, yarn over, 
from the back of the fabric, go around the post of the stitch, yarn over, pull that loop all the way up and through. You can kind of wiggle your loop, your loops on your hook there to kind of give yourself some working room. Yarn over, pull through just that first loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So we're going to make these extended back post double crochet stitches around each stitch until we get to the next corner where we double crochet two, chain two, double crochet two. Pretty simple round, but with a unique stitch. So I will see you at the end of round 11, where we should have 128 stitches with eight chains, two in each corner. I'll see you there. Okay, so at the end of round 11, you should have a pretty good square here with some great texture. And of course, 128 stitches and four chain two spaces, one in each corner. So to begin round 12, what we want to do is slip stitch our way over to the corner, whether you're working with one color or you're just continuing with your third color here. So we just make a little slip stitch in each stitch until we get to the corner chain two space here. There we go, like so. And now that we're in that chain two space, we can begin round 12. We're going to start with a chain two that does not count as a stitch. And then for this corner, we're just going to work a double crochet, chain two, double crochet. So just one double crochet, chain two, and one more right back in that chain two space, like so. Then we can begin working our way across. We are going to chain one, skip the next stitch, and double crochet in the next. So that's what we're just going to keep doing right on across. So chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next, and I'll see you as we approach our second corner here. Okay, so our repeat there was chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next. So if we work that all the way across, we'll have 16 double crochets, that's after the corner. So here's our little corner. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And if you look here, you'll see that place us right in that last double crochet in that corner there, right before the chain two space. So rather than a chain one here, uh, having a chain one between this last double crochet and our corner, we're just going to go right to the corner instructions where we double crochet, chain two, and double crochet. And then we can begin our repeat across again. Here we chain one, skip that next stitch, and double crochet in the next, and repeat that on across, and that will look the same. We'll end up there in that last stitch before the corner and work another corner. So work your way all the way around for round 12 and I will see you at the end of round 12. Okay, so at the end of round 12, you should have a total of 72 double crochets. And you can see that at this point, my square is getting quite large. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, this is not the original yarn and hook size that was called for in the pattern. This is the Moogly Crochet Along version. So no matter which version you're making, whether you're making it for the Moogly Cal or the Sweating Blanket Crochet Along or for your own project, this is a great point to start measuring it. If you need a specific size, you'll want to make sure to get that. So you can start adjusting your rows, for instance, for this row 12, which we just finished, instead of uh, doing double crochets, you could do single crochets in, in between those chain ones. Um, that would bring it down. Or you can make a taller stitch if needed if you find that your square is coming up a little too short. Although in that case, I usually prefer to add another round. So again, measure your square as you go throughout. If you need an exact measurement, feel free to adjust the pattern, omit a round, do whatever you need to make it work for you. So for now, let's go ahead and continue with round 13. I have joined that first double crochet I made there in the corner and I'm simply going to chain one and single crochet in each stitch and chain space all the way around the square. And at this point, I'm going to work a single crochet. Actually, first I need to work into that first single crochet we joined to with a single crochet. There we go. Then each corner chain two space, we'll get a single crochet, chain two, and single crochet like so. After that, just single crochet in each stitch and chain space all the way around the square, and I'll see you at the end of round 13. Okay, so at the end of round 13, you should have a total of 140 single crochets. That's a single crochet in each stitch and chain space around, with a single crochet and chain two and single crochet in each corner. Round 14 will be the last uh, round that we make with this color. We're going to simply chain one, 
and work a back loop only half double crochet in each stitch around, working a double crochet, chain two, double crochet in each corner. So we're going to yarn over and go right in the center of that V of that first stitch, go under just that back loop, pull up our loop and make our half double crochet, just as we did before. We'll work our way all the way around just like that for round 13, join and break our yarn and then work our final edging for round 15. So I will see you when we get to round 15. So as you can see, round 14 will just add a nice solid round with a little bit of texture from working in the back loop only. Now I'm going to adjust this one specifically for the Moogly crochet along to fit that 12 inch, uh, that 12 inch dimension. So I am going to have to adjust these a little bit. Again, the original was made with a little bit thinner yarn and a smaller hook. So if you want to see the changes I've made for the Moogly crochet along version, please go to the link in the description. However, from here, I'm gonna pretend that I'm finishing it as for the wedding crochet along blanket as written in the original. So I'm just going to pretend I finished this round and pick up my next color, our last color, our border color for round 15. And this one I'm going to join with a standing single crochet to any corner chain two space. So a standing single crochet, I like to do a little bit differently. Um, now, originally when I first started making these, I would start with a slip knot on my hook. Now I like to do it by just starting with a little twist there, just enough of a twist loop there to keep the yarn on my hook. Then I will insert my hook in that chain space, yarn over and pull up a loop, adjust those loops there nice and close to each other, yarn over and pull through two. And I find that gives me a really nice single crochet to start with without a knot. If you'd like to see the original way I did standing single crochets, you can go to the link at the link in the description. Now from there to finish off round 15, we are going to work two single crochets right back in that chain two corner there. So that means each of our chain two corners will have three single crochets worked into it. And then working our way across between each corner, we're just going to single crochet in the third loop of each of these half double crochets around. Finding that third loop, uh, loop of the first one is always extra tricky, especially with the dark yarn. And it's a little bit easier actually if you use a sharper hook. This one has a very rounded point to it, which normally I love. Uh, but if you're having trouble working to these third loops, using a hook with a little bit sharper point might help there too. Of course, I forgot to yarn over, or excuse me, I don't need to yarn over, it's a single crochet. We're all set, good. So I will carefully pull that loop up through and finish that single crochet. Now after that, it's typically a lot easier to find that third loop. And we will just single crochet our way all the way across, working three single crochets in each of those corner, uh, each of those corner chain two spaces. Then we work our way all the way around, of course, join and finish off, and that will be our every little thing square. And that's how to crochet the every little thing square. Now I'm going to adjust this one so that it fits the Moogly crochet along. So you can go to the link at the link in the description there to see just how I have adjusted this square for size there. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you'll give this pattern a try. I really enjoy making 12 inch squares. It's a great way to learn new stitches and try new designers, new patterns, as well as enjoy some fun crochet alongs. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you think in the comments and please don't forget to subscribe to the Moogly YouTube channel. Thanks so much for watching.